This is a chapter four video and we're looking at arrays and for loops. So first of all, we're gonna have a quick look at arrays. So you've looked at array lists. Um, we've been working with array lists um, of different types, uh, some strings, and array lists of types track. Um, and all these array lists, um, when you put uh, objects into the array list, you haven't to, had to worry about the size because the size just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger each time you add an element to the list. Now, fixed size collections, um, otherwise known as arrays, um, have been used in computer program for a long, long time, and they're actually um, they were used before array lists and, and that type of object. Um, some and, it's, and when when um, we're using uh, programming, it's it's still valid to use arrays because sometimes we know the size of a particular list. For example, um, the size of a football team will only have eleven players in it, so that's a, a fixed size. The size of um, um, of three D um, uh, of three D X Y and Z coordinates. That's a coordinates. There we have three elements in that, and that will only ever be three elements. Um, so some things we know the size of. Um, good thing about uh, the uh, the arrays is we can store primitive types, which we cannot store in an array list. Um, but we can store object references and primitive types in these um, arrays. Because they've been around since um, since the start of programming, really arrays. Um, they use a special syntax, and this syntax conforms to the traditional method before Java came around um, of, of use of arrays in, in other languages. So when you do see arrays in other languages, they do correspond to the same syntax, so it is slightly different. Um, we now use brackets, or we use, we use brackets in arrays, so um, the, the term to describe the square bracket is a bracket, and I'll use that term from here on in. So here's the syntax of what something um, what one looks like. So we've got a, an example class here called student data, um, and we're going to create um, a, a an array. So the the first one is the de is the definition. Um, as you see there, um, we've got our um, uh, we've got our um, square brackets as shown there and that shows that it's an array so without that it just becomes an integer um, of called student marks but with that um, brackets there just after the the type which is being defined um, that then becomes an array uh, we don't specify the size when we um, define the array we specify this um, when we do the assignment which is here um, so what we do is we get the in the name of the variable in this case is student marks um, we add the new keyword in there equals new int. We use these square brackets again, which is a, um, which is this strange syntax, and then we specify the size of the array. So here is an example of what an array might look like. Um, as before, we've got the index, um, as we've um, seen previously. The index um, is is starts with the zero. So if we've got um, uh, 11 elements. This here has got 11 elements. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 elements there because the size um, on, and the, the, the 11th element has the index of 10. So that's the same as the array lists. Now the way we represent this um, is when we, when we use our array lists we would have something like this. We'd have tracks dot get and then um, the the index which we were working with, um, and then we'd get it that way. Um, when we're using um, arrays, it's slightly different. We don't need to use the uh, tracks.get, we use this method up here. Student marks, square bracket, open um, the uh, open square brackets, put in the, the two there, which will then correspond to this area here, um, and then that gives us, rather than using a get method, to get the information from that um, element in the array. So here's um, some more examples then of what, what it could look like. Um, the first one we've got to see is a, a type um, int array. The second one is a type string array, um, called student marks and names respectively. Um, then we've got the assignment there um, of the, um, the student marks array. Um, and then we've got examples of how to use it at the bottom there. So um, examples of how to use it here. We've got um, this one here, it uses the actual figure here. Um, for whereas we might need to use something like i as a variable, um, or we might use something like the index um, create a variable index. Um, whichever way we're going to do it, um, we can we can stick the um, the uh, variable in 
the square brackets there. Um, we can also then, um, if we get a bit clever, then we can pick out a specific um, element in the index uh, and we can add one to it. Remember this plus plus syntax. Um, and then if we wanted to do a, a print line, then we've got um, the normal system that add a print line, um, student marks, open the bracket of whichever element you want to print out and then close bracket um, and then parentheses to finish off your statement there. Um, literals, um, if you've heard of the word literal before, literal is just um, describes what something looks like. So an int literal would might be three, a Boolean literal might be false. Um, those are the the actual, uh, the literally the actual um, object or, um, or primitive type which is being used. So what we can do is we can actually um, create um, a um, integer array, um, and we can define it and assign it in the same um, in the same statement um, as you can see um, there. So normally this would just be the assignment on its own, um, but we add an equals in there um, and then stick in what we would like in the array itself. So it assigns it with some actual values. Uh, when we're working with the array length, if you remember when we worked in the array list, um, we would use the array name and then to get the size of it, it's dot size. Um, however, that's shown um, using um, that would be shown using, so if it was the tracks one again, let's do it the tracks one, uh, we do, tr we would do, I'll get this in a second, we would do uh, tracks dot size, and then we put two parentheses. However, with arrays, we don't work with that, we work with the actual field um, called length. And to get a field, as, um, as long as the field has got a public access modifier, then we can just do the name of the object, dots, and then the name of the field. So in this case, we use the, the field length, and that's used. Um, you won't see many fields used directly with objects um, like this, and array is one of the, one of the ones which does, which does do it. So just a little um, discussion then on public and private fields. Um, normally we like to keep our fields private. Um, this helps with encapsulation and encapsulation is an important part of object orientation. Encapsulation um, is the ability for objects to maintain and look after their own data and have no other class or other object or other process interfere with that. Um, particular field. Um, so we like we like to keep them private. However, sometimes it's useful, um, as in the with the array list, that we can get access to the length field. If we want to be able to give someone access to that, then we use um, public. In order to get access um, to arrays, um, we often use a for loop. Um, a for loop is uh, very similar to a for each um, loop, but for each loops which are used specifically with collections. Um, array lists um, and other collections like that. Um, the for the for loop as used with arrays um, and um, is is the main thing for assigning um, array um, uh, arrays and all the values therein. Um, for loops can also be used um, in general for other programming, and you'll often see if you want to create um, say a number list, um, you might use a for loop. But they're very useful um, in other um, uh, in other programming applications. So uh, we've got the, um, the general form there. Um, it's a little bit different to how we've seen um, other um, loops. Um, one of the main things is the structure here, and you'll see um, for loops um, in any programming language basically have this structure. You have the start variable, how, what you would like the start variable to be. You have the condition at which the variable needs to get to, um, and then you have what happens each time the loop gets iterated. So you've got the initialization condition and the post body action. Um, those are separated by semicolons, um, as you can see there, and it's important that you have those semicolons in place. Then you've got the statements to be repeated, um, and so whatever variable you've used uh, will then, um, whatever variable you've used um, in the initialization there, will be then used um, in your uh, loop body in here, which is the statements to be repeated. If you wanted to see what it looks like um, in the equivalent while form, then that's how it looks there um, with the um, initialization um, as before um, and then everything there. So that's sort of the pseudocode of how it would look in a while loop. 
let's have a look at an example then um, so what we're going to do here um, is we're um, going to put our variable in um, our variable and this one here is going to be called int hour so we assign our variable int hour we then say um, effectively while um, the variable hour is less than the student marks dot length so while uh, so keep doing that then increment it by one so what we're going to do is uh, the first time the loop runs through it's going to have a value of zero um, as it runs through the system dot out dot print line our uh, which is the, um, the student variable in this case the first time it would be zero so zero plus a uh, little colon there in a concatenation um, then you're going to have the student marks for that particular um, index next time around the hour will become two and then you'll have uh, one rather and then the um, hour system dot out dot print line one plus dot dot student marks and then whichever student mark is stored at element number one um, and then so on and so forth so this iterates through the whole um, array using this for loop It's a good idea that you get the hang of using these for loops. So um, there's plenty of exercises here, um, and one of the exercises here, and the, the first one here, um, I want you to create a student class, and in the student class, um, create um, an array of, as you've seen with this, uh, the previous slides, um, and um, do create those methods as it says there. So get the hang of using for loops, get the hang of using arrays, and we'll work on those in class. And I've got plenty of tutorials for you then. Okay, see you then.